Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada. And what we have here is a, a really interesting Mustang, 1968 uh, GTCS. The CS is for California Special. And I do have the owner here who doesn't wish to be videoed, but uh, in the audio portion, uh, he'll go through the restoration. He's had it for five or six years, maybe 10 years. Uh, 10 years and knows every little square inch of this car. So I'll, I'll involve him in the video, we'll go through it, talk about a California special, what it is, uh, and then about this particular car. Uh, and it's really kind of an interesting story. So we'll turn this camera around and I'll show you this beautiful 1968 Mustang in uh, more detail. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, we have all of the uh, documentation report on the car. What do you call this report? Marty report. Marty, Marty Auto Works. And is he, uh, is, is it like a blooming field it is for Corvettes, what this guy is to Mustangs or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he's the only guy that has access to all of Ford's uh, paperwork from back in the day of these old cars. Okay. So, so he does this, does a reproduction of the bill of sale, and then tells a story on, you know, this was this was the pick ticket, what was going to be on it, and everything, and then where it came into, like it was delivered into Lethbridge. Oh, and, it's a local car, did not? It? Yeah, it's a local car. There was only they started selling them in. Uh, California only is when they were supposed to be so Southern California. Then they weren't selling enough, so then they opened up all of California, then Nevada, then Oregon, and then they sent some up to BC and Al Alberta. But they, they 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 didn't they didn't sell them in the Midwest, did they? No. So this car, okay, so California, only the Western Seaboard. So, so my understanding, uh, just for some brief research, is that it was the California. Uh, four dealers that all got together and requested the car and then since well this car was made by Shelby so it was a Shelby produced car anyway the uh, um, the prototype was and yeah. anyway he, Carol Shelby decided that he did not want to uh, do notchbacks and that he was only going to do fastbacks all right and so uh, Lee Iacocca got wind of this anyway, and uh, and, the, and at the Southern uh, Dealers Meeting, Lee Gray got some of Lee Iacocca's kind of ear time, said, can I show you something? Took him to the back of the Ritz Hotel, had this par parked there, and said, you know, Shelby's not going to do Shelby cars with a notch back. Can we do it for Southern California? And they got the green light. And then, then he went back in, people came out and saw it, and he took, uh, I think something like 5,000 orders that night from wow. the others. So who's the, this guy, Lee Gray, he's a Shelby employee? Lee Gray was the Southern California sales manager. Okay. There is a book, and I have it, and it's called... Uh, GTCS and it's written by a guy named Paul Newitt and it has all of that information in it from the whole story e e the whole story and how to how to properly restore the California special okay. so, so we used it as a guide okay okay to make sure that we did everything everything right so and then and then just to recap um, you could uh, the California special was a trim package you could add it to any uh, uh, you could have any combination of options have or any colors. Any combination of anything you wanted on a GTCS, but well, as soon as you ordered the GTCS, you got certain things like the emblem delete, you got the hood locks, you got the the uh, indicators in the hood, you got the you know the the side scoops, you got the fiberglass trunk, like all all of this stuff. The the okay. way that it says Mustang and the California Special in the in the back, they don't have the they don't have the running horse on this thing anywhere. Right, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Now, what's with these wheels? They um, Those they... are the wide oval firestones that- Bias ply. Yeah, that came with the car. And like, and... like was, was the original, there's, I think it's Cooper tires, or the guys 
that uh, originally started making them, and now Firestone is making them, and they're a Firestone tire. So that was, that okay. was good. And the but GT, I, would that have come okay, with so that hubcap? No, you could get it without the GT package. Okay. So if it comes without the GT package, there's no GT SIM okay. cap. And what, what does a GT package get well, you? Well, the GT package on this one, um, let's see what it says in here. Blah, 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 blah. GT Equipment Group, which was 170 bucks, And I believe... So it, this is a uh, GTCS, but not a, all GTCSs have a GT Equipment Group. That's right. You have right, to have that right. GT Equipment Group. Okay. To get the GT on the side and the, okay. a few different but, things. But uh, a California Special without the GT Equipment Group is still a GTCS. Uh, no, well, yes, but it doesn't have the GT Equipment Package. Okay. You call it a GTCS, and they never call them just CSs. So, okay. Yeah. But they won't have this GT okay. cap uh, in them. Okay. Um, and that came with, you know, beefed up, a little bit beefed up suspension in the front and a few okay. things. So, I mean, obviously this is taking styling cues from the, from the Shelby GT350. Yep. Um, and so it's an appearance package meant to sort of evoke Carroll Shelby's racing successes with the with the GT350. Well, so, and he, this, the notchbacks, Carroll Shelby raced the notchbacks, but he never put them on as road going cars. Right, because it's probably the had, light. He, it's lighter. It's lighter. And he yeah. had a lot more success with the notchback than he ever did with okay. the fastback, but he liked doing the fastbacks. Okay, so does it follow then that most of the people who ordered the, the, the CS California Special trim package ordered the hotter? engines in the car no most of them didn't most of them didn't most huh? of them most of them put in 289s and then the 302 became available so they put the 302 in so so probably 90 percent of these cars are 289s and 302s okay. even more maybe so I mean, there was 4118 of them built and only 111 of them got a 390 so okay, so the the three oh twos and the two eighty nines are the small block, but the three ninety is obviously the big, the block, big block, right? Yeah. And, and so then, yeah. and there were only you said a couple of the two four twenty eight. Two four twenty eight. So how Marty many he owns one of them from Marty's Auto Works okay. and the other one is owned by a collector, I think, in California. Okay. okay. A That's big it. block California special is pretty rare. Now very rare, especially if it's got a four speed in it. With the four speed, because they also had automatics in them. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember if there was more uh, big blocks. I know there was only 111. Uh, where are we on? Where, is it? where are we on here up here? Okay, so 215 actually came with the 394 V engine. Okay. Four of. Uh, 111 of those had the four speed manual. And then this is the only one of that that was painted seafoam green and had black okay. bucket seats. So, it's a so this is the only green seafoam green 394 speed ever that okay came off so it's a light. one of it's one a one of one and you can get a lot of one of one of one uh mustangs because they're there's so much there's so many different things that you could do on them but to have a big block four speed that's yeah, yeah. that's the big and how many like and they made i think i read that they made um they sold six hundred thousand mustangs in the first year or something like that uh, yeah, in the first year. In 1968, they sold 317,423. So, so we're talking, you know... This is one of one out of over 300,000 built that year. Yeah, and, and like the whole, like this first generation Mustang, I mean, the production run must be, well, it must be well in the millions. Oh, millions and millions and millions um, and millions. And most of those are red. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> red, some of them are... Wimbledon white, <laughs> but that's why this one is, you know, I like the fact that the guy, when he ordered it, he ordered it with the big block and the four speed, yeah. which is great, but I love the fact that he ordered a really strange color that nobody else wanted, and yeah. now, yeah. people see this car and they go, that's the most beautiful color I've ever seen on an old Mustang, Yeah, and I go, yeah, and uh, 
I might not have picked it if it, if I was buying it brand no, new. No, but back but then. now but, but now, now you I want would. you need, now you want rarity. You want to have the you want to have the only one. Yeah. But uh, okay, so we have a production run of forty one hundred cars. We have a couple hundred of them that are oh. that are big blocks. Yeah. You know, then you narrow it down to the three ninety and the four speed, and you get to a hundred, and and then and then you choose this color, and you're down to one. Okay, so. Um, uh, and we, we have the stock ride height and everything, the stock, yeah. the profile on the tires, the way yep. the car sits, everything um, exactly all, should be. all of that stock. Okay. So, okay. So let's, let's get into, um, let's get into this particular car uh, sold new into Lethbridge. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, in 1968 for, uh, that that bill of sale showed, I think, four thousand dollars. Forty-two fifty or something. And is like that, that that wouldn't be a Canadian price, though, would it? That oh, would be, be Canadian price. That's a Canadian price. Yeah, that's Canadian. So price. that's the actual amount that forty-three hundred and ten dollars in nineteen sixty-eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, and presumably a base one would have been, you well, know, yeah, under two to the low threes. If you were to get just a base base Mustang, okay, they weren't that expensive. You so we're get, and that was like a that was like a three speed manual with a yeah. two sixty or something in it. Yeah. So this would have been you know maybe almost a fifty percent uh, price increase over the base one. Okay. Yeah. Well, this one has three hundred and thirty five horsepower. Okay, that's what it's rated at. That's what it's rated. Three thirty five and probably more torque, huh? Yeah, about four hundred pound feet of torque, something like that. Okay. And so um and you could probably I mean just for performance, I mean oh, zero to sixty is probably you know, probably seven seven sixes. you I'd think six, yeah? Sixes, okay. Yeah. Okay. So plenty of grunt. And uh not a not a very fussy engine, I imagine, huh? No. Like what does it rev to? Like four grand or forty five hundred or something? Yeah, about about forty-five to five. You can okay. take it over that if you wanted to. Okay, but you don't. You don't. You just never need to. Never and need to. and then a four-speed manual pull. gearbox. Yeah, okay. All right. So now the history of the car. It, it gets sold into Lethbridge. Yeah. Uh, what do you know about it? Gets sold into Lethbridge. Gets sold to this guy who I don't know. Um, I've never met him. He passed away. Then uh, his son then got the car. Um, his name was Tim. Yeah. And I knew him through a buddy of mine, Jeff. And Jeff bought the car from Tim. All right. And then he had it for a few years. I don't know, maybe four or five years. And, and what, what year are we in now? We, we would be in uh, 1987. Okay, so you're a, you're a young man and, and, and your buddy buys this car off the yeah, son of the original owner. I really owner. wanted it, and I, and I said, if you ever sell it, I want it. But when he went to sell it, I still couldn't afford it. So I was going out with a girl, and her dad was a car collector. So I told him about this car, and he went and bought it. And then, for whatever reason, he had other car projects on the go. It sat in the warehouse for 20 years. Nothing. Never registered yeah. it, didn't do anything. And then he passed away, unfortunately. And I ran into his wife and I said to, I go, whatever happened to that, to that uh, California special? And she said, well, when her husband passed away, um, he had just decided that he was going to restore it. So he, he was going fishing in Campbell River and he drove up to Campbell River. And then on the way, he had a buddy of his that uh, restored some cars for him. So he dropped it off there, but then he died. So now they didn't start the car and they said, okay, well, we'll bring it back to Calgary. And I said, well, when it gets back to Calgary, give me a shot, give me a call and give me a shot of buying it. And so they called me and I, uh, and I went down there and I paid more for it than it was worth because I'd wanted it for ever. A good part of your life. Yeah. So I bought it and then I wasn't sure whether I was going to do a resto mod on it. And then I watched a, a clip on an interview on uh, Jay Leno's garage. And this guy, Paul, knew it was happened to be on there. It was just perfect timing. And he was talking about this book he wrote on the California special. So I ordered the book. 
I uh, started reading through it and the history on it, and I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna restore this thing to, to original, and that's how I decided to do it. And then I spent too much money because I'm meticulous on everything being perfect. Like I said, yeah, well, it looks, so it the looks paint like it. was thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. So I mean, it's, how it's many years passed between your first awareness of the car? Mm -hmm. And when you actually bought it. Okay, so uh, my first awareness of the car would have been in 1982, and then I bought it in probably 2011. All right. Maybe. All right. So 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. So 30. Well, I knew where it was for 20 yeah, of those. Okay. So 30 years jammed later. In this, jammed in this. Uh, uh, in a uh, warehouse. All right, so 30 years later, you buy the car, mm -hmm. and then it takes you, what, like five years or something to yeah. restore it? it took me about four or five years to restore it, and and now and then, and I've had it for six years since it's been finished restored, and I've driven it, <laughs> I don't know, 400 miles? Yeah, that's usually, yeah. usually the way it goes. Well, when the car is so perfect. Yeah, it's hard to yeah. I mean, and, and I had an enclosed trailer, and somebody stole it. So I was going to take it around to a few shows and stuff like that, but somebody ripped off my trailer. I never bought another new one. I mean, I've had it in storage. It just, you know, out of sight, out of mind. But yeah. now it's just, you know, it's a beautiful car, and some and it, somebody else needs to own it who's going to drive it. Yeah. That's really so what it comes down tell to. me about the... I even the... redid the steering wheel. I sent oh, it the, down yeah, it's Cali gorgeous. Sent it down to California to this place. Can't remember the name of the company, but they uh, they redid yeah. the entire like steering a thousand wheel. Thousand bucks or something. Yes, like yeah. fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me about the state of the car when you found it thirty years later. What what? Now we have photographs. You have the restoration photographs, but yeah. But uh, when you looked at it, what what were its obvious needs? Um, well, it had a little bit of rust, like back here. Yeah, and I remember, I remember, I helped you helped you sort that out. Yeah, and and I have the photographs of that yeah. when uh, when so we were doing that, that work. There, but there wasn't really much rust on it. So floor pans, sills. Yeah, floor pans, sills. Yeah. But wait, did they were they were replaced or not replaced? We we cut them out and brazed in new ones. Okay, so floor pans, just sills. Just what we had to. Just yeah. just the pieces we and, needed. And and uh, you know and the. Uh, uh, lower fender, so the usual spot. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't rotten though. No, not even okay. close. Okay. I wouldn't have even started it if it was yeah. like that. Okay. Um, what, what's the, what was, do we have mileage? Do we know how, what the mileage is? What's on it now? Yeah, what's on it now? What's on it now is 54,941, and that's true. It's not 154, it's 54. 54, 54. That's because I mean, it was driven for, it was driven for 10 years, and then it was put away for 20. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so you got the car, it's got a little bit of rust. Uh, the interior is, you know, old, presumably. Yeah, the interior was okay. Yeah. But it wasn't perfect, so I had it all. Had okay, it all so the whole car got gets completely disassembled. Um, it get, gets right down to the, uh, to the monocoque. Yeah. Uh, and then about five, well, more than that, uh, well, maybe eight, nine years ago, then I see the car, and we set it up to do some metal repair. Yeah. Uh, which is a guy from RM Restorations uh, who worked on some Pebble Beach cars. Absolutely knows what he's doing. Um, yours was one of the <laughs> few jobs we got out because. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kept bugging him. So somehow he responded to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah I kept <laughs> but him anyway, we 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 got this job done. Um, and, uh, we, like I said, we have photographs of it and it's done properly. Uh, he did uh, the bonnet on a 58 Aston Martin for me and, and, and a, you know, from scratch in aluminum clamshell bonnet, including the grill and was perfect. He's perfect. In fact, when I took it after he was done with that to take it and I took it to cars by Nisbet, Nisbet actually asked me, he said, who did the metal work on this? And I told him who it was and he said, Give me his phone number because yeah. this guy is an unbelievable metal worker. Yeah, worker. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, by Nisbet. I mean, Nisbet has done cars. He holds the record for 
the most expensive. Well, he did. I don't know if it's been passed now, but like as of like five, six, seven years ago, he had the record for the most expensive Corvair to ever be sold at Barrett Jackson. That's how good of a job. So, what, 40, 40 grand? <laughs> yeah, I think 60. I think 60. But when the cars are, no, that's, you know. That's a joke, everybody. Yeah, I know. But I mean, I think it sold for 60 grand, which were for a Corvair was a lot back then. Uh, okay. It's a lot so, for a Corvair today. Now, okay, so the... Uh, the people that touched this car, uh, okay, so we have our restorer from RM. Uh, Nisbet is a guy out of uh, Cochrane, Alberta. Uh, Red with, Creek. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, well, yes, in that area, Cochrane, okay. sort of, yeah. So with a you know, national and even international reputation, and that is, those are the, those are the guys who did the uh, body and paint. And uh, interior and all of that stuff. Oh, he did everything? He did all of the interior, he did like the dash, he did all of that okay. stuff. And then Dale Adams did all of the motor work and, you know, pulled all the new wires. Yeah, and, and he's stuff. Like, like, you know, locally anyway, he's, he's the go-to guy. He's for, the go-to guy, especially for motors. Did he have the Super Performance franchise? Was that him or was I'm that? Not, you know, I'm not sure. Okay, anyway, well-known, well-known, so well-known well -known people did all the work. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the restoration takes you five years, and what did you spend on it? I haven't added it all up. I don't really want to, but one hundred and fifty thousand, hundred and forty thousand. Yeah, okay, like so well into well into six figures and on I the restoration. The, I got uh, that's why it took so long because I wanted it done right, and like, yeah. and Nisbet kind of worked on it when he didn't have other rush projects and stuff like that. So that's why it took so long. But but you actually, I wanted to keep the, the cost down. I probably saved myself 20 or 30 grand by doing that. Well, it's amazing because nothing ever gets done like that usually. usually. No, no, I know. And it wouldn't get done like that now. Uh, all right. So um, we have a, a local car uh, with, what, 50-odd 50, 50 thousand? 54,000. 54,000 original miles on it. Yeah. Treated to a... I mean, it looks like you spent 150 grand on the car. Like yeah. you said, the paint alone was 35, and it yeah. and it it looks it. Um, uh, you know, absolutely professionally restored. Uh, let's, you know, some just because a car is shiny doesn't mean it's done well. And um, when you examine a car, you know, really closely, you can see sometimes if it's not not a concours job, you can see some prep marks in the paint, uh, you know, little flaws here and there, and I, I really don't see any of that. I mean, this car just came out of storage. It, 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 I don't think you've looked it's at it. It's been stored for three years. I haven't even come down, and it started right up. Yeah, I, well, you, even, you even forgot how to get here. <laughs> yeah, I forgot how to get here. <laughs> yeah, that's how long it's been. It's kind of a problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, it did really start right up. And I, yeah. I can't see anything in the paint. I mean, it really is a concourse paint I mean, shop. I could use, you know, like a, Maybe been sitting a, a, a detail. Buffet, yeah, a yeah. little detail, but that's it. I mean, it sat in there for three years, and there's really, like, not even any dust on it. Yeah, there's... But everything was like... Really okay, so I saw one thing here. I have a new one of those. You have a new one of those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that was, uh, well, we don't know when that was done. It was bent out and I just bent it back in. In fact, the funny thing is, I have oh, two. Oh, somebody, somebody caught yeah, the edge of it and bent it, it out. I have yeah. two of these. Two of these. I bought one and then forgot I bought it. And I went, I got to get another one before I go out there. And I got another one. And then, of course, I left it at home. So I have two of those. And then I also have two sets of tires. Wheels and, and tires. Wheels and tires. So you, like these. Brand new. So same wheel, but with different tires? Same wheel and tire. It same wheel one, and tire. Yeah, it might have a... And then I have a brand new set of American Racing ones that were basically... Uh, were on the, the Shelby's and some later oh, okay. Mustangs. So if you're going to drive, you if might as well put do, those on. Day, yeah, because it's quieter, it yeah, handles yeah, yeah. better. And leave and, these for the shows. Yeah, and it's a, they're just American racing with a, a set of rubber on them. They look really good on there, actually. Okay, and windshield. That doesn't look like there's anything. All those come off. 
Okay, so, you know, you know, judging, you know, absolutely it's the number one car. There's no question about that. Um, you know, if it was judged, you know, you know, some of these judges can get, you know, carried away with overspray in the right places or whatever. Yeah, so there's... And there's, I have the chance to do that. I'm yeah, gonna this... Because I'm going to drive it. Why bother? Yeah. But you didn't drive it. I did drive it 400 miles. <laughs> All right. And so really, you know, you got... Di everybody puts Dynamat on the, under the carpet. That just makes sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, and undercoating on it. But we have photographs of all the metal, uh, of all the metal works. So you don't have to worry about the undercoating covering up anything. And we have something that is, you know, Barry's right. I mean, he, he really poured a lot into this car. Uh, not just money, but his own time and research and something. And, and you can just tell that he knows every square inch of it and everything that was done. So... Um, Okay, so we have a, uh, a real original engine bay. Um, we have the original, so this is a, a 390. Okay. It uh, has a replacement block, but the block is date coded to the correct year. Correct. And then it has the correct head, right? And carburation. Yeah. Carburation. Distributor. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the. doesn't surprise me a lot of no. okay so they got a new block but critically it started life as a what with what engine 390. so it all, this car always had a 390 because you could get these cars with like a an inline six or something Maybe a new? Little 302 or 289 or 260 and then the 390 and a 428 and they only have a made uh, two 428 two 420 and what about a 427 I don't think no, they made never did. You never? And that was the racing motor, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it was off with it, but it was off with it. Okay. But nobody bought it. Yeah, it was like twice as much money or something like that. Yeah. All right. And uh, we have and we have the correct finish in the engine bay. It was, it's supposed to be the sat lock. Yeah. That's what it, that's what it came with. Okay. And you have reproduction decals in there? Yep. Okay. And, um, and the battery even. That's a... It's original style, it's but original the interior. Because okay. the interior, like I wanted it to look the same, but I wanted a good battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've, and then this would have been the, the correct uh, battery terminals. That's what it would have yeah. had. Because that's kind of unusual, huh? Yeah. The square one? Yeah. Okay. And um, what else do you have? These are the original hose piles. Uh, and I, are they called banjo type? Yeah. Like banjo type hose piles. They're actually really hard to find. Yeah, they're uh, really hard to find. Because uh, nobody, nobody stocks those. And uh, and that's a, that's an original alternator or the, the correct, correct type alternator. Okay. And then you would have done all the rest of it. 
like this is even the, uh, the original uh, brake. But yeah. the top is, we have to get a reproduction top. Yeah, okay. And uh, it's a vacuum boost. Alright. And what's, what's this? What are these? These? these cars came with indicators in the hood. Oh, so you could see them. So you can see them. <laughs> and then hood and then hood and tie. Oh, the, that was part of the, the California stuff. And, and no. No, uh, no pony on the front. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Lucas headlights. They came with two different types, Lucas and Marshall. So this one has the Lucas on. That was the, the Lucas was the earlier ones, right? Lucas was the later one. Later. The Marshalls okay. were the ones they originally put on. All right, and then uh, and then you got hood pins. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Now was the bonnet a? Um, uh, a unique uh, CS. They're called CS GTs, right? Or, G, or GT, GT CS. Yeah, GT California Special. Uh, and is this bonnet a unique yes. CS piece? Yes, it's unique for that, especially with those like And it's a it's a glass fiber or metal? This is metal, but the trunk is fiberglass. All right, and these I guess that would be fiberglass too, then. Right? Or glass, eh? Yeah. Okay. Whatever it was. So then, and these hood scoops. Those are unique as well, right? But non-functional. 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 Um, they're off of a Shelby, but they're non-functional. Uh, you know, the pull-off brakes are non-functional. Functional. Yeah. Okay. And then the boot lid here is a glass fiber piece. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it comes with a different, uh, different gas cap too. And the lights are different, right? Um, the lights. A lot of people think that because these are off the Thunderbird, a lot of people think they're sequential, but they are not sequential lights, they're just right. regular lights. Just regular brake light, regular indicator, they're not sequential. When I was a kid, I saw the car do that, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. Oh, yeah, it was the coolest thing. I, right. And I wish they would have put it in here. Okay, so looking underneath the car, uh, we've got this. Um, we've got a black undercoating, and Barry, you said you did that just obviously to protect the the, the the metal. And we also have a dynamat under the carpet, right? Correct. Okay, so both both items are just for NVH noise, vibration, harshness, just to make it a little bit uh, a little bit more livable. Um, we have a modern MagnaFlow uh, exhaust system. Is it stainless? Yes. Okay, so it's a new stainless exhaust system. And then what about the headers? Are they? They're the original headers from the 390. Okay, so they're 390 headers. 390 headers but yeah. you, you would have had like a normal, um, uh, just a steel exhaust. Yes. Uh, they wouldn't have come with stainless exhaust, obviously. No. Okay. No. But that's... that's Same uh, with the cheap exhaust. Yeah. So, okay. So you can, you know, if you really wanted to, you could have an For original... For $200, you can put it back to original. Yeah, okay. That's how much it was. I looked into it. Too. Yeah, okay. But this is like better for driving. All right. Yeah, and better sound and freer flowing. Yeah. Right? All right. Better so driving. we got that. And then, um, okay. And then this fuel tank looks new, I imagine. Yeah. And Everything uh, on the car is new except for all of the stuff that I could save. So uh, if I could save it and refurbish it, the original, yeah. I'd put it yeah. on. But if, if it was too go long gone, then yeah. I replaced it with, you know, uh, reproductions. But reproductions, um, most of the time, I could get uh, the reproductions from the four jigs. Yeah, okay. So, so there's a, was, like, for special, like, for... For Mustang parts, there's a there must be a massive network there's a of million suppliers. Of them. So you're always looking for the guy that has the original oh, box or whatever. Yeah, it makes and stampings to make it so that it's all the full moco yeah, yeah. Uh, stuff. All right. Because okay. guys buy that stuff all the time and then they just sit on it right. and they just make reproduction parts out of it. Right. Okay. So, um, you know, those are the original leafs, or the, the, they'd be the original type of spring that it would they're have come the with? They're the original leaf, and I, actually, I'm not sure if they're the original leaf, to tell you the truth, but they'd be the original uh, copy, but they may be the original 
They may be the original uh, leaf, actually, but maybe not. Okay, but there, but that's what it would have yeah, been born I don't with. Really okay, remember. it'll be in in all the paperwork. And uh, you know, with the California Special, you could you know the full option list for all the period Mustangs. You could option it any way you wanted. Any way you wanted. And one of the options was a posi traction. That's right. And this one didn't have it when it was born. That's right. But you but you found a, a posi traction axle for it. Yes, I put one in. Okay. And do you know... All period correct. And so do you know that what year it's from or is there a date stamp on it or there, if just that it's correct? there's a date stamp on it, it'll be inside, but it is correct. It's so, the correct one. Okay. Yes. So if you so, look um, under the car, the... From 68 from to 60, 70, they use the exact same right, one. And right. before that, I believe they may have used it as well, but this is that one. Okay. I sourced out, not a brand new one, I sourced out a period correct one. And then had all the had, had it. it completely rebuilt and then put in. All right. Okay. So new bearings and all that stuff. Um, obviously, we've got you know. Obviously, you want new brake lines, new rubber hoses, the rubber buffers for the uh, the uh, for the axle, and uh, you know, obviously, all new fasteners. Everything. Linkage. Uh, even uh, even the transmission linkage and stuff. Yeah. Is all brand new because they'd had a. Uh, like a slap shift kind of shifter in it. Yeah. It was off to the side. So I had that all, that that extended hole that they had in there, I had it all filled in, like brazed yeah. all in and all new stuff put back on because I wanted it to as back to like as correct as That's possible. possible. Yeah. And that, Other uh, than, you know, a few things, the dynamic the exhaust, blah, 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 yeah, stuff yeah. that you can change if you want. Uh, but nobody would. Um, nobody ever So would. that, and that's the new wiring harness, obviously. Yeah. And it's the correct type of wiring harness. Yes, and this you... was uh, a, a rotisserie restoration. So yeah. it was down to absolutely nothing. Yeah. And, we have, the body. We, and we have photographs of that. We have photographs but, of uh, that. Like that isn't, like that's the way it, that those, the wiring harness is the way it looked when it was new, right? Yeah. With the, okay, with different... Yeah obviously the stripes colors and so on yeah. uh we're missing this inspection plate uh which is being provided with 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 the car upon the sale just for whatever reason the guys left it off um and then the brakes were were they were they reconditioned brakes or just reproduction brakes original or what did, what original. did you do with those or, uh, new new reproduction brakes new reproduction brakes and the yeah. original finishes and obviously you know you can see all the correct Ca everything castle is, nuts yeah. everything is completely correct and the mechanical work was done uh you know by somebody who you know obviously was a mechanic yeah uh, you did well, uh dale adams did them did the mechanical work and he's he's dale known, adams. okay like globally almost yeah. You know? yeah okay so it's it's professionally restored it's not in somebody's I garage not touch this car. <laughs> all right <laughs> And you can see the detail there, yeah. and just all the pins are in the right places Everything and so on. Everything is perfect. All right. Uh, and, uh, okay, so um, we've got, you know, the usual little drips, but that's just what there's, happens when you have an old car. There is another number for the, uh, for the tranny. Which is, oh, the, right. the, which is the original tranny, just is the rebuilt, original tranny. and, you know, sandblasted, made perfect. Yeah, and it looks, uh, is that, was it uh, coated? Like, is that a, um, like a ceramic coating on that? That's on this? On the, yeah, on the gearbox. No, this is, that's the way that they just came. So that's, that's just, that's just uh, steel then, or that's just cast yeah. iron, right? Yeah. Okay. And then and then painted the, the original color. Oh, there's a coat of paint on it though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's a coat okay. of paint on it. For okay. Sure. Okay. Everything was everything was done. Yeah. To factory, full factory. Yeah, with subtle improvements with for drivability. With improvements in drivability for the guy who's going to want to drive it, you don't want to chip up the inside yeah, of yeah. the wells and. And what you about know, stuff nice. like uh, what about stuff like uh, cooling system alternator? All of that, uh, every, everything replaced. We got a new, uh, we rebuilt the alternator because we. I wanted to keep as many original parts as possible. We did have to get, actually, no, we, 
took that the radiator in and had it record. record. Okay. Um, cost me twice as much as it would have to just buy a new radiator, yeah, but I wanted yeah. the original one. All right. And so, but we didn't change anything in the, for the ancillaries um, to, to modernize it in any way. No. It's all, they are, they're the original components. No, okay. this drives like a 1968 Mustang. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> the, the, same way. Everything's the, same. the, the changes then, at least on the underneath of the car, um, that would be modern componentry are limited to the exhaust undercoating and a dynamat and a posi rear end but that's a period piece that's it's just a period, a period piece, piece. But it's it, just yeah I, th this one just didn't happen to come with one yeah okay but in terms of new stuff yeah um and it's not that i ever even did a burnout in it i just wanted to, yeah yeah i just wanted in case stuff. the next guy wants to do a burnout he doesn't <laughs> want the old one track burnout all right and uh okay so that's that's it for the bottom <laughs> All right, well, let's take this uh, California Special for a drive. No power steering? No power steering in this, baby. That is good for your... It's the old core strength. It's the old strong arm. Uh, feels like a big engine, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And a beefy shifter. And beefy wheel. Oh, and the bias plies too. They're, they're a little bit uh, harder to steer than the radials. Yeah, especially when you're not moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll go for a short cruise here. Can we get through here? Uh, should be okay. Should be okay. Yeah, so parallel parking is probably not much fun on us. Nah. <laughs> hey, you're you're really thing. working. <laughs> yeah. No, I have to work. Right, what's until, the, you get, until you get going, right? What's the clutch weight like? Uh, it's it's a little heavy, but yeah. it's not it's not like overly bearing. Yeah. And do you did you get much seat time in the car before you restored it? No, no, a little bit, but just because I wanted to see what it was like. Should we go down this way? Sure. Uh, all right, and do you have oil pressure? Oh, yeah. Do you have a gauge? I've got temperature gauge, and I've got my gasoline gauge, and i got a dummy light. Oh, so there's no oil pressure there's gauge. no oil pressure gauge right. on it now. It's just got a um, dummy light on it. But this is something that a lot of them didn't get. With the tack. Wow, so we're doing 50 miles an hour and we're at 1600 RPM? <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it really goes. Yeah, there's like, no... For, you know, for... 1968. Yeah. Like that, right? Um, but I mean, it's seriously. And what what would it weigh? Three thousand pounds, thirty-two hundred, something yeah, like that. Thirty-three hundred pounds. Thirty-three hundred pounds. Only because it's got a big motor. And then um, put it. Uh, yeah. So that's only four thousand. Four thousand. That's only four thousand RPM. Yeah. Oh, that's all I'm taking my time. Yeah, well, the soundtrack's just great. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's an awesome muscle car. And I think, nice. you know, I don't know how many years it'll take for all the, the fleet of cars on the road to be electric or mostly electric. Um, you know, that'll make cars like this, you know, even, even the experience even more unique. Well, I mean, the experience of driving a car like this compared to today is... You, dri you drove a car like this. Yeah, it was, yeah, it yeah. It was driven. And you, you don't know, even today, think about it today. We don't even, I mean, we have to think about it slightly 
in, in the next 10 years, we're not going to be thinking about driving at all. Right. We're just going to be like, so what's going on? Right, right. You know, read my newspaper, make a phone call. You know, so we're, you know, all the motoring journalists are going on about, you know, how they miss analog cars and so on. Well, this is an example of that, isn't it? Oh, yeah, totally. It's about as, it's about as analog as you can get. There is nothing. <laughs> I mean, not even power steering. They're all make a turn here or head back, right? Yeah, sure. I right, just so want to demonstrate that it, you know, actually works. They run. Yeah, and it runs. <laughs> it runs and it runs well. Synchros are good in the gearbox. There's no whine from the rear differential. No. It's... We're not getting any any valve tappet noise or anything else that's you know no. wrong. It's all good. And it, and it feels like it's going to. Uh, now, normally after a restoration, uh, you know, there's a period of time where you're addressing all the little, you know, little things. There, there Which, could be leaks and, yeah, and, uh, yeah. and it's, it's, always, it's always the case. It can take you, you know, a good 500 kilometers or something like yeah. that to sort it out. Yeah. And, and, and you put, you say about six, 700 kilometers on the car? So put about 400 miles. All right. So that's yeah, 600 k. All right, and then it's gone back to it was back two or three times. Yeah. Small stuff. That's normal. Okay. Yeah. One uh, the last time it was setting up the car, but yeah, it wasn't just wasn't quite idling where I wanted. It was idling a little bit high, right? Yeah. And I take it back to them for them to do it and stuff because you know more works. Uh -huh. um, right. Because I just I didn't want to do I didn't want to screw up anything. So I was just like you guys do it. I want to keep yeah, you, you, you can't. I'm not going to start dicking around, and they go, "What were you doing dicking around with carburetor?" You can't swear on YouTube because otherwise they're like, "You just stupid." <laughs> yeah. Did I swear? <laughs> well, you're about to. You're yeah, I know. And I, I, that's true. I was about to. Yeah. We got to look after my uh, YouTube ratings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a good job it's not going direct to direct to online. <laughs> it's not live, no. Yeah. Um, Okay, so it's because normally if you get a restoration that's fresh out of the box, well, then you don't know. It can be a little disappointing because it might take you a while to sort it out. I've okay, seen but, a lot of guys that have bought those at Barrett Jackson and stuff. Yeah. I've seen them down at Dale Adams. I've seen them yeah, at, uh, yeah. at these bits, and yeah. they're just a mess. Yeah. Like, they don't even drive. Yeah, they're just I mean, all, they're, they're just shiny. Like, they didn't even shake it down at all. Yeah. Like nothing. It's like they put it together, put it on Barrett Jackson. Looks all shiny. Looks new. Starts. Gets onto the. Yeah. Gets onto the uh, onto the stage, and then the guy takes it home and he can't drive it. Yeah. yeah. It's just well, they probably finished it the night before. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I, I mean, this has been finished for quite a long time, you know. But it's it's perfect. It's mint. So why do you think they put signal lights in front in the hood? I don't know. Just to be clever, or you know, I don't know. You you think? What did you do for a dash pad? Was it cracked? Did you? Yeah, uh, it was cracked, and I and I ordered a new one. Okay. Yeah, no, they're always cracked. Yeah, yeah. Well, they sit in the sun for so long, it's right? Okay. Yeah. And all these. And what about this this piece? Is that all? That's original. That's original. Yeah, okay. it was just it was just cleaned all up. The that, that, the gauges were all pulled out, redone, and yeah. then put back in. The original gauges, though. Yeah, they redid yeah, yeah. the original pages. And did you send those away, or did we? Yeah, get they them? got they got Nisbet sent them somewhere. To like North Hollywood Speedo or something. Yeah, like that. something like that. I don't know where exactly where they yeah. went, but um, he sent them away. And, and, I, and how many speakers do we have with the Philco radio? Uh, there's one up here, <laughs> and there's one up here, <laughs> and I think that's about all there is. All right. It's kind of, you know, nice parking. Or did you abandon it? Uh. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's a fun car, and I mean, I would love to have been able to take it to shows and stuff like that. But it just, it just never, never worked out. Well, sometimes so, your stuff just kind of owns you. It does. But I've never, you know, I've never ever worried about 
you know the quality of the build in this car yeah, yeah there's no question about it there's it's uh, absolutely it's, uh, no question professional concourse yeah. built all right well i hope that was uh, somewhat entertaining um I haven't I haven't driven many in many muscle cars before, so it's actually no. kind of a treat for me. Your muscle cars are uh, <laughs> like those square body 1958 <laughs> Defenders. Or no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. No, oh. no, 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 no. Looks great, and you can you can really tell it's a professional job. There's no rough edges anywhere. I mean, it it really looks authentic. Uh, and it doesn't look over restored. It just kind of looks brand new, which is what his objective was. So uh, with that, thank you very much. Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada, and the 1968 Ford Mustang GT CS California Special.